So you too, team keep it clean. What's going on? Sing Graven here with another video. And man, I'm 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 hyped right now, man, because my uncle just told me that he is gonna come through. He's gonna fly down uh for the Ravens and Dolphins game. <laughs> can't wait for it but anyway something that we didn't have to wait for uh was hearing from some of the ravens rookies today um those rookies being uh dalen hayes uh ben cleveland and also tylen wallace uh and with dalen he um he was somebody that said that he was a ravens fan growing up so being drafted to the ravens was something that was very surreal for him um, so that that's a pretty cool experience. Like, can you imagine that? Like, some people that had a really good experience, uh, I would say Torrey Smith uh, being from Maryland, going to Maryland, and then getting drafted to play professionally for Maryland. So it's like, oh, man, what, what, a, what a great setup. And then, of course, um, Tay-Tay as well, Tavon Young. Uh, so the same thing happened with him as well because he went to, uh, what, Temple, I believe. Uh, but anyway... Dalen Hayes, he said that he's looking forward to rushing the passer because that's an easy way to change it. That's the biggest way to change the game. Not an easy way, but that's the biggest way to change the game. And it is because a good pass rusher is very disruptive. And what they do can have an impact on so many different levels. Like one, for example, a good pass rusher, you sack the quarterback. If you sack the quarterback, that means a quarterback dropped back to pass and he wasn't able to get the ball out of his hands and he ended up losing yards. So that was a beautiful thing. Um, and then you can cause an incompletion. It can be third and long. It can be second and long. It can be first. It could be whatever down and distance. But the fact that you cause an incompletion means that the opposing offense, they did not generate any positivity uh, with their yards. And another thing, one of our favorite things that uh, the, uh, causing pressure can do and getting to the quarterback, you can force them to throw an interception. And when you force them to throw an interception, every time that people watch that highlight, any time that people watch that replay, they say, ooh, oh, that was him. He got to the quarterback, and he's the reason for this interception season. So shout out to Dalen Hayes. But probably what, was my, uh, what my favorite thing was from his presser today was at the end, the very end. He finished answering all the questions, and then at the very end, he got up, but then he sat back down real quick, and he was like, hey, thank you all for the warm welcome to the Ravens, and I, I love that. I love that. Coach was in the stream, too. Coach was like, hey, his people raised him right, and I agree. They certainly did, but that was my favorite part about the entire thing. And that has been one of my favorite parts about hearing from some different Ravens like Adafi Away. He's another one. He didn't speak today, but speaking from the, the very night he was drafted, like the very night you're drafted, you're supposed to be all hype. You're supposed to be running around. You're supposed to be like, yeah, but Adafi Away was straight to business. He was straight to business. His family was in the background celebrating more than he was. But when you hear him speak that humility, man. That humility made such a big difference to me, and I appreciated it a lot, like a, a whole lot. So it was great. Um, now, next up, the next person who spoke was uh, Tylen Wallace. Uh, Tylen Wallace, uh, Ravens, fourth round pick, I believe. And they asked him, I believe it was either Jeff Zrebic or Jamison Hensley. But one of the two asked him, well, how do you feel about being compared to Steve Smith Sr.? Because that's who a lot of people compare you to. How do you feel about it? And he was like, I'm honored. I'm honored to be compared to a receiver of that caliber. And they asked if he had met him yet. He was like, no, not yet. They asked him if he met Lamar yet. He was like, no, not yet. And they asked him, how, how, what about the playbook? Because you, you used to playing on one side of the offense. Like, how, how has the transition been? How is it learning the playbook? Do you think you're going to be able to get it? And he, was like, he said it's going to be tough. He said it's going to be a challenge, but he knows that he's going to be able to get it. Uh, he said with the terminology from when he was in college, he said it was usually like one or two words and then boom, go, let's do it. One or two words, but now uh, in, on the professional level, it's going to be a lot more words than just one or two, uh, so it's going to take him some time to get adjusted. But he did show full confidence in himself that he is going to be able to fulfill whatever role he's given by the Baltimore Ravens, and when it comes his time, he said he's going to do his thing. So we're looking forward to Tylen Wallace. I know that that is actually a lot of people's uh, favorite pick from this draft. That has been a lot of people's favorite pick, uh, but somebody else... <laughs> monster among men somebody else who was a lot of people's favorite pick in this draft ended up being ben cleveland 
And Ben Cleveland, like, we, we all saw the video from this morning that the Ravens dropped. We've seen every single picture of this guy. This guy is a giant. It, he is a giant. Like, it, it does not make no sense. And he even got Braun Strowman looking at him. Like, Braun Strowman, that's a giant right there. Even though he done got cut up now, he's still a giant. And he looking at Ben Cleveland like, and he tweeted him, are we related? Hold up now. And they even set up a little thing where he said next time, Braun Strowman said next time he's in Baltimore, he's going to go to Jimmy Seafood. They got to go there together. So it's going to be like looking in a mirror for both of them two. Uh, but that was super cool. So shout out to Ben Cleveland. Shout out to Braun Strowman checking in too. But Ben Cleveland, he is, again, huge. He said that he didn't really even start paying attention to nutrition until he got uh, to the collegiate level. Because he said back in high school, he said before he went to sleep, he used to eat like two Little Caesars pizzas. Not two slices, but two pizzas, two pies. Two whole pizzas of Little Caesars. And that, that was his sort of nighttime remedy. That's how he went to bed. And I'm like, man, I, I do the same thing right now, but I, <laughs> I'm certainly no Ben Cleveland. Uh, but he, uh, <laughs> so shout out to Ben Cleveland, man, and that, that diet. Uh, Jameson Hensley asked him about the, the squirrel. How, what's going on with the squirrel? What's up with the squirrels? And Ben Cleveland said, hey, that's how it was sometimes, especially back in high school. Uh, if if there was no deer meat left, like <laughs> he said, if there was no deer meat left in the fridge, he said, "Hey, I'm going out to go get a squirrel. I'm gonna go get a squirrel." Ben Cleveland made sure that he had something to eat. Ain't no deer meat left. Okay, let me go to the next best animal that's out in the in the yard in the forest, whatever it may be. I'm going to get a squirrel. And you know squirrels are everywhere. They're in like every state. But Ben Cleveland, he said, I'm making sure I'm eating. I'm making sure I'm filling up this plate. Uh, but then he, he spoke about football. And one of the questions that he was asked, and it's a question that uh, a lot of us have talked about too, really throughout Ravens media, Ravens social media, just Ravens talk, period, uh, is that a lot of people expect him to be the starter. And I, I really loved and I appreciated his answer. Um, because it was the truth. It was the truth. Ravens are not going to just give hand somebody the starting position, especially on the offensive line. They don't do that. As much as us fans may clamor for it and, and feel like we know that, hey, this guy needs to be a starter from jump, Ravens don't do that. The biggest example I can remember is from that Kansas City Chief left tackle Orlando Brown Jr. I remember when the Ravens drafted him, I, I said... And this was a little before preseason. During preseason, too, I said, oh, he needs to be the starter. I watched him when he was out there. I said, he needs to be the starter. Orlando Brown Jr. needs to be out there with the starting unit. Did they listen? No, they didn't listen. They didn't start him. And they didn't start him until injuries happened, unfortunately. But then once he started, that was it. They never looked back. And neither did he. Because now he's over in Kansas City. But anyway, this could be a possible similar scenario to where they're not going to just hand over the starting job to somebody just because a lot of us feel like he should start. Even maybe some people in the Ravens may feel like he should start. But he has to earn it. He has to earn it. Jobs are not just going to be given to people. And they shouldn't. They shouldn't. But with Ben Cleveland, when they asked him about that, they said, hey, how do, how do you feel about possibly being a, a plug-and-play starter from day one? He said, I ain't worried about that right now. I'm not worried about that right now. He said that my primary focus right now is to learn this playbook. He said, I can't go out there and play fast if I don't know what I'm doing. I, it's impossible. And that's true. You, 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 you could be as Good as you were in college. The pros is a whole nother level. It's a whole nother level. So with Ben Cleveland, I, I, I really appreciated that. Because again, like I said, it's the truth. The more you know something, the smoother you'll do it, the better you'll do it. That repetition, that practice, that being a, a student of whatever it is that you're trying to learn, that helps so much. And it allows you to do things a lot faster. Things come a lot easier. And then after you've been doing it for so long, a lot of stuff just becomes second nature. 
So Ben Cleveland is not like, hey, I'm, I'm the starter. I'm going to be the starter. He didn't even say he wants to be the starter. Of course, we know he wants to be a starter. Nobody goes to any football team, anything like that. And like, oh, you know what? I want to be a backup. No, nobody does that. But I appreciated that about his answer. Again, I think the biggest theme for me today from what I took away from these three rookies, Dalen Hayes, Tylen Wallace, and Ben Cleveland, was humility. Humility. Especially being the new kids on the block and them all being not necessarily all later draft picks, but they're not first rounders. They're not second, ain't even second rounders, but they were drafted to this team in order to help this team. And in order to help this team, some of them even this year, they look to have a significant impact right away. But the fact that they, they know that nothing is going to be handed to them and they're all willing to earn it. And I mean, they got no choice but to try to earn it. Because it's not going to be like, okay, you got drafted? Okay, here you go. No. But I, I, I really appreciate that they know that, they acknowledge that, and they're with it. So, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.